What will I gain from this video? After watching this video, you will be able to identify common lines, stripes, and borders within the mediastinum. An X-ray interface requires two significantly different radiological densities to be touching. Within the mediastinum, we have interfaces that are formed between the lung and the mediastinum, between the trachea and the mediastinum, and between the lungs themselves. In discussion of the mediastinum and these interfaces, terms such as line, stripe, and edges are frequently used. These terms need further clarification. The term line refers to an extended longitudinal shadow in the lung or mediastinum no greater than two millimeters in diameter. A stripe is a line that measures two to five millimeters in diameter. And a edge is formed when a structure interfaces with the lung to create a border that does not qualify as a line or stripe. If we look at this representative image of the thorax, we see that the lung will form an interface here, 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 as well as here. Each of these interfaces is formed by the lung touching specific anatomical structures. There are several central lung mediastinal interfaces. The interface related to the aorta is called a periaortic stripe, and this is represented by the white line. The interface related to the paraspinal soft tissues is called the left paraspinal stripe, and this is highlighted with the blue arrows. The interface related to the esophagus in the azagous vein is called the azagosophageal recess, and it is highlighted by the purple arrows. The interface related to the aorta and the left pulmonary artery is called the aortopulmonary window and is represented by the green line. The lateral edges of the mediastinum on the right are formed by the right atrium inferiorly and by the superior vena cava superiorly. The lateral edges of the mediastinum on the left are formed by the left subclavian artery superiorly the aortic arch, the main pulmonary artery, the auricle of the left atrium, and the left ventricle. It is important to note that within the superior mediastinum, the lateral border of the mediastinum is formed by the superior vena cava, a vein, and on the left, it is formed by the subclavian artery. If the two lungs touch each other, they can also form interfaces and these are called junction lines. On this CT scan, we can see that the left lung is touching the right lung, and where the two lungs touch, the pleura will be identifiable. On this PA x-ray, we can identify the anterior junction line as this linear density extending through the mid-mediastinum. This should not be confused for a pneumomediastinum. If the two lungs touch each other posteriorly, as seen on this coronal CT scan, they can also form what's called a posterior junction line. And this is seen on this examination posteriorly through the tracheal airway column. Again, this should not be mistaken for pathology within the mediastinum. The trachea and the air within the trachea can also create an interface within the mediastinum. The most important interface is the right paratracheal stripe, and this represents the soft tissues in the paratracheal region with the tracheal airway column on one side and the lung on the other side. And this should be no greater than five millimeters in diameter. Occasionally, the trachea will form an interface with the mediastinal structures on the lateral x-ray posteriorly. This is called the tracheoesophageal stripe and is the interface between the trachea and the esophageal wall. And this should be no greater than 5.5 millimeters in thickness. Additional edges that can be seen on a lateral x-ray include the anterior border of the heart, the inferior vena cava and the posterior border of the heart, and the aortic arch. This is an unusual example case where, in fact, the interfaces within the mediastinum are intact but are completely reversed. This is a case of complete situs inversus. I can tell that it's 
complete situs inversus by the elevation of the left hemidiaphragm, which indicates that the liver is also on the left side of the body. In this example case, we can notice that the candy cane is missing. Normally, we'll see the aortic arch in this region. But what we have is an additional density on the right side that has a similar appearance to the aorta. And this, in fact, is a right-sided aortic arch. In this case, we see what appears to be the aortic arch, but is more inferior than normally expected. And we see also what looks like a possible aortic arch on the other side, but is also higher than is expected. The patient was investigated for adenopathy and was found to have a double aortic arch. So in summary, the whiteness of the mediastinum is not a homogeneous white area, but is comprised of interfaces that form edges, lines, and stripes. Systematic approach to mediastinum requires identification of each of the edges, lines, and stripes. In a poor quality, underpenetrated x-ray, the edges, lines, and stripes can be lost.